Good afternoon. Today is the 27th of August and it's time for yet another very vague, very rambling and probably not very interesting vlog. I'm in Hertfordshire at the moment. Today we'll be go today we're just going to the shops, but tomorrow I'm going to the Nebworth Classic Motor Show, uh, which um, is about 20 minutes or so from here which is uh, happening on the 20th and 29th of August. Probably most of you will have actually seen that well before this video for the simple reason that um, these very vague vlogs are released to channel members on the set Toledo and River 45 V6 membership levels. On the day that they're recorded or soon afterwards, the rest of you have to wait a few weeks for them. Some of you will say well, it's a very good thing you wait forever for them because you don't want to watch them. But uh, there are actually a surprising number um, of you who do enjoy uh, watching these, and that's why I continue to make them, even if um, you know some of you think they're the most terrible thing ever and the viewing figures aren't very high. But nevertheless, I want to talk about something uh, to do with my professional experience as an independent vehicle consultant today. Um, that sounds very boring, but I assure you it's actually not, because we're going to take a look at um, some of the experiences that I've had on test drives, looking at cars for clients, which have been, well, yeah, not very good, I think is the uh, main thing I would say. The first one, which uh, occurred many, many years ago, is before I was even actually operating, in my, in my job in a sort of particularly paid capacity was um, when a friend of mine and I were going out to look at some Vauxhall Zafiras. Now back in the day, this was around 2017, it was perfectly possible to pick up a sort of 10 to 11 year old Zafira with under 100,000 miles on the clock for about 1,500, maybe 1,700 pounds you can't do that anymore at all. You just, it's just not possible. But um, it just shows how you know much higher second-hand car prices are these days. But that what we were looking at. They needed a, a, a Zafira. Those were, as probably they are now, one of the cheapest options to get seven seats in a car in this country. Whether they're good or not, they're basically an Astra H, a, you know, a car of which I've owned, you know, one myself and. My father in law still owns one. In fact, you can see both of those reviews on the channel. I will put a link to them in the description below. Um, if you were interested, maybe you're not. Um, but we had a look at uh, a couple of them. A couple of them were okay. Uh, the one I remember though, we went out to uh, Surrey and we had a look at this one. It looked okay. Uh, we were just out on a test drive and the thing just, just cut out and just. It totally cut out and it wouldn't it wouldn't restart and what had happened I think is just the, um, the seller had just not charged the battery enough that there was a problem with the alternator or something like that and uh, I had some jump leads in my car that I bought but we were maybe I don't know three quarters of a mile or something away so we had to go and uh, we had to go and sort of get the um, get the car to come and jump this Safira in order to do your test drive and uh, you know if you've ever tried to sell a car to someone and had that sort of experience something like that's happened to you you'll know that it's it's not great the person's probably not going to want to buy the car at stage so we walked we walked back to where the seller uh, his premises were and we picked up um, picked up my car and uh, we came down and jumped it. We said he was sort of calling me, saying, "Where are you?" And I was sort of thinking, "Well, you know, like, never, you know, we haven't left you." <laughs> Getting a bit nervous, um, but we ended up just not not buying it because there were others which were kind of a little bit, a little bit better um, than that one. Uh, sometimes on the Zafira, the Zafira B we're talking about, which would be about 2006 or seven. The handles for pulling up the rearmost uh, seats actually break. It's very difficult to get them up, and this had happened on this one, and you kind of knew that it was a worse example because of that. The uh, example 
of something that's happened on a test drive though that I've had most recently was when I was looking for a, a camper van for some clients um, and I was in Berkshire, this is just the other day actually, it wasn't very long ago and uh, I'd driven one on a previous occasion, we were into the second day of the search wanted to go and drive one um, in Surrey which was fine, no real problem and then we got to the last one which was in, um, which was in Berkshire and I could just tell before I even sort of did the test drive that it might not be the best experience. Now, it was a 2013 Vauxhall Vivaro, an engine that I can't talk about, um, but I, you know, I'll break my own rule anyway because it was just a two litre um, example. They're actually reasonably reliable engines, but they're a chain cam engine in this. Um, the Vivaro is exactly the same van as a Nissan Primus Star and the Renault Traffic, they're all the same. Um, this is a late example of the second uh, generation of of, um, of this design because uh, the original, original Renault Traffic ran for 20 years. It ran from 1980 to uh, 2000 with like a major redesign in the 90s. The uh, original version of that was a sort of big redesign was sold from 1995 to 2000 to the Vauxhall Arena. Um, so yeah, so we we were we were in that. It was 2013 and. Uh, it was okay at the start, but gearboxes in those aren't particularly nice anyway. They're very long lived van design over, I think, no, no 2000 to 2014, so 2013. And uh, the gearbox wasn't very nice, it was becoming increasingly difficult to change gear in it actually, becoming more and more difficult to change gear. And uh, you know, I, I've had cars with clutch systems just fail on me um, before, as some of you will know, that happened on our Sanyong Tivoli. It also happened as well on a Skoda Octavia many, many years ago when I was at Santa Pod, if you could believe that, um, with lots of a friend of mine. You know, the clutch just became, um, you know, not really operating in the correct way, and I was left with what they call a box full of neutrals, which means you don't really go anywhere. This sort of ha was happening. The clutch wasn't coming up in, in this Devaro van. It was going increasingly difficult to change gear, and uh, my client said to me, having some difficulty changing gear there. And I said, uh, <laughs> yes, I am. And we got to this roundabout. Um, fortunately, it, the road's quite busy, but there wasn't anybody behind me. And I managed to sort of coast it off the roundabout, down a hill onto a side road, which was safe to sort of pull over. Uh, I, put, I pulled the clutch up with my foot and it did go back up. And I was able to drive it back to the, to the seller's premises. Um, still with the nasty gearbox that you know they have, it's just the way that they are those vans. Um, and uh, I just uh, I just left the key with the uh, with the seller and we walked away because that's really what you should do if you have something like that, which is potential to actually break down on the test drive. Um, but you know I managed to get it back and uh, my client bought another one that uh, we'd seen. Um, instead, which I'm not surprised about, um, this particular one actually was a hybrid um, camper van. There's not a huge amount of those around actually, um, but this was um, this was uh, this was one of them, and uh, that's what that's what she ended up buying. Which um, you know was a sort of new one to me. I had to do some proper research on those actually before I before we went out for the test truck. I didn't really know much about them. Um, I don't know. I don't know everything about everything. Um, some people say that I do, but that's totally untrue. It's absolutely untrue. There's a lot of things I don't know anything about, and that was perhaps one of them. So, yes, um, that was awful. <laughs> I can only describe it as, as really, really bad. Um, just, yeah, I don't know really what you do in that sort of situation. I, I, I'm trying to sort of think in my mind, um, sort of, then as now as to whether or not this um, particular seller actually knew there was a problem with the van or not. Um, it could be that that was the first time that it happened, but having spoken to Mr. Coleman, a rubbish mechanic, who does know virtually everything there is to know about any car or van made in the last 50 years or more, um, he just said, yes, those care boxes are absolutely terrible. They're bad when they, when they work. and some of them fail at less than 50,000 miles. So I have a feeling that actually, because they, they dealt in vans at this place that was selling them, 
that they might well have known that there was a problem, and they didn't tell me, which was uh, which was nice. Anyway, um, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching this uh, very vague vlog. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment below. And uh, if you wish to hear more about the sort of experiences I've described in the video, then let me know and uh, we shall do some more. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching.